Welcome back, my digital mutants. It is I, Delmico L. Cunningham, better known as Dr. Media, with your daily prescription fix for everything media. So, in one of my previous videos from the beginning of the year, I did a series on how to install FreeNAS, well, not, actually not how to install FreeNAS, but how to install a development kind of environment on FreeNAS and use some of the resources on that FreeNAS box that are just kind of sitting there and use them for other things. So one of the things about that video is that the video was, rec was recorded and I apologize all the time for that video. It was recorded at a really low quality and there was no other way to get that video back and I had no other way to get it back. So I decided to make a quick video um, to show the process and just go through it in one fell swoop and make it pretty easy. So here we go. So inside of FreeNAS I can have a jail. So I'm gonna make myself a jail in FreeNAS. I'm gonna come here and go to jails and I'm just gonna go in here and say add a jail. So I'm gonna add a jail in FreeNAS and and we're gonna go in here and name it. So I'm just gonna name this uh, like test um, let's just call it, you know what, let's just call it the PHX Web Server. And I'm going to go to ad advanced mode right here. One thing that I want to do, I want to give it an IP address. I want to give it a pretty high IP address because I don't want it I don't want it interfering with anything else on my network. Most of the things that are using DHCP on my network are using lower um, IP numbers and I don't know what those are because I've got you know wireless devices that pop off um, and things like that so I, I don't have those set so I want to set this at least for me I want to set this IPv4 number pretty darn high so I'm gonna set it to like 65 so it's gonna be 10.1.10.65 it's still gonna be a net mask of 24 and everything else is gonna be the same and we're gonna head ahead and hit OK and what it's doing right now, you'll notice well, if it if you can see it. Well, what it's doing is, if if we had to download it, it's downloading a base image of basically a free NAS and making a jail for it, and that's kind of it. So you see now, I have my jail IPv4. It's an auto start jail. The status is that it's running and it's just standard. So. I have Bitvice installed. I like using Bitvice over Putty. Some people would like to use Putty, but I like using Bitvice for my SSH. So it's just a personal preference. It's nothing. Um, I think I think there's just some things that uh, that Bitvice does a little bit better than Putty, in my opinion. So I'm logged in to root of my SSH into my FreeNAS box. So the first thing I'm going to type is going to be JLS. I want to see the jails, and JLS is basically jail list. So I just listed all my jails, and I can see here's that jail that I just added, which is the web server, PHX web server, sitting right here. So what I want to do is I'm going to come in here, and I want to type J execute and 6 and then CSH. So J execute is telling me execute into jail 6 and use a uh, terminal of the, CS, uh, the CSH. Uh, terminal. So you'll see now I'm at root at the web server. So right now nothing is running. And I'm going to type in, I'm going to go in here and say PKG because I'll be using package. So I'm going to say package and say upgrade. So let's do an upgrade on package and see. Everything's working fine. Everything's, uh, you can see things are downloading. So everything's in here. Everything's working. One of the things you have to remember uh, you really want to check first and you can see right now a package actually needs to update uh, the current package is 1.6.4 and the newest one is 1.8.6 so I'm gonna say yes and then hit enter and let it download the new packages and let it run through and it's also looking for other packages that need to be updated so it's updating everything and um, going through it so that's actually kinda cool it's, it's updating all that stuff and I don't have to really uh, futz around with anything one thing you have to remember there's two ways that you can that you can actually add programs to FreeBSD. FreeBSD lets you compile a program just like any other version of Linux um, would do like well even the FreeNAS is, even the FreeBSD and FreeNAS are not Linux they're based off of the BSD kernel um, and BS and the Unix BSD but they're very similar and the simple the simple thing to remember is is that you can compile stuff from 
the source code and you can do the same thing on Linux you could you can compile everything you want it to to use and do that and that works it takes a little bit longer when you compile stuff and you can also do that on free on free BSD and on free NAS at the command line you can actually compile the programs you want to install but by using the package management system of PKG uh, I'm, it's basically you're getting a pre-compiled version of what you're running because there's not a lot of, at least in my opinion, for things like the Apache web server and things like that. There's not many things that I could that you can tweak that you really would want, that you really would want to run source code to actually tweak. Now, some people might argue the point and say, "No, I always run my stuff from source and you know build it." Uh, when I was a a Gentoo user, a uh, Gentoo Linux user. Everything on Gen 2 uses the ported system, so it uses a system that's very much like the FreeBSD port system, it, with the package manager. Except on um, on Gen 2, they use the portage system, and everything on Gen 2 has to be built from source code. There are no there there really are no pre-compiled versions of things for Gen 2. Um, now there is another there is a Gen 2 variant. Uh, which is called Sabion. Sabion Linux is based on Gentoo Linux. Sabion is really nice because Sabion lets you use the portage tree and actually build everything if you want to, but they've built their own repository of pre-compiled uh, software, so it just makes things go a lot quicker. So, just things like that. So we can see that everything is good and everything updated. So the first thing I want to install, first thing that I usually install when I'm doing one of these uh, FAMP servers is I install Apache first. So let's install Apache first. So I'm going to come in here and type pkg install and let's type Apache 2.4 and then hit enter and you can see it's looking it says new packages to be installed Apache 2.4 lib XML and then PCRE so I'm gonna say yes we wanna install and go ahead and let it install so first thing it does is download everything and then you see now it's installing everything and it's done pretty much it's got a couple more things to extract for the Apache main server it's almost done so we can see it doesn't take long when you're going through this. One thing that I one thing that I will say this is actually pretty cool um, and pretty quick to be able to go through this. So I can see that that's actually built. Everything's good. And right here it's telling me I need to run Apache Web Server from startup. You know to add the Apache underscore enable yes to the uh, Etsy RC dot config. Well, I can do that pretty easy with another command. I'm going to use the sysrc command. So what this command is going to do is that anything I type after sysrc is going to get automatically written to the rc.config file. So I'm going to type in apache24 underscore enable equals and so double quotes yes double quotes and then hit enter and you can see that what it did was for that for the RC file for the rc.config file it has echoed that into the actual file something else that I want to install because I, I, I actually like working for a command line with this particular command line editor which is nano so I'm gonna say pkg install nano so I can use nano from command line it's always nice to be able to do. So let's go check that RC config file. So I'm going to type nano forward slash etsy forward slash rc uh, dot conf. And you can see that yes, what happened was is that the Apache 24 underscore enable equals yes has been added to my actual RC file, which is really cool. So I didn't have to I didn't have to come in here and edit it. I was just able to do that from command line. So let's get out of nano. To get out of nano is pretty easy. All you have to do is hit control and X and that will exit you out of nano. So I'm gonna hit LS to do a list, just looking at where I'm at. So the next thing that I want to install with uh, the FAMP with my FAMP server is I want to go ahead and do my MySQL installation. So to do my MySQL installation, I'm gonna type in PKG and MySQL. 5, 6. Actually, we need to do package p 
PKG install and then MySQL 5.6 and then I'll hit enter and you'll see it says well MySQL 5.6 was not found so let's do this with package so this is something really cool with package I'm gonna say PKG and say search and I'm gonna say MySQL 5.6 and hit enter and you'll see what it does actually by typing in MySQL 5.6 it looks through the portage database and finds anything with that name attached to it and I can see that what I really wanted to install was MySQL dash server that would be the proper name so let's try it again so PKG install MySQL 5.6 dash server and you'll see yes now it found it so when you install the server it's going to install the server and the client and the libedit and we're going to say yes to everything and let it download all those pieces so it first downloads all the T tzg files all the compressed files and then goes through and it compresses them and adds them to where it needs to be at and you can see it made me a group and made me all these things and everything is pretty much good so right after running my mysql what i want to do is i want to say mysql underscore secure underscore installation uh, oh yeah and there we go so installation so when you hit when you do MySQL underscore secure underscore installation it's gonna secure your MySQL database so right now we don't have a root password so I'm just gonna hit enter for no root password and I don't know why it's doing that enter password for root and we'll just do 1307 that's really weird okay so let's do this again so MySQL secure install and Oh, I know what's going on. Duh. Okay, this is what happened. The reason why the the secure is not working is because the MySQL server is not running yet. So what we need to do is we need to actually activate the MySQL server. So I'm going to say service, and we're going to say MySQL dash server, and we're going to say one start, and let it run and you'll see it'll show me in a second there it goes starting MySQL so MySQL is now running so now let's type in MySQL underscore secure underscore installation and now let's do it now if I hit enter because I don't have a root password I'm just gonna hit enter and you'll say set the root password yes I set the root password so I'm gonna type in my root password and hit enter and then type the same password in again and hit enter it's gonna ask do we want to remove the anonymous users yes remove all those anonymous users uh... disallow remote login for root yes disallow, uh, disallow that remove the test databases yes reload privileges yes and then that's it my server is up and running so to make sure that my mysql server is always running every time um, just like it does when, just like my Apache server is now set inside of the rc.config file to run, I want to make sure my MySQL is set the same way. So I'm going to say sys rc and then mysql and let's un underscore enable equals yes. So double quotes, yes, double quotes and you can see now it said mysql underscore enable and it's going to be yes inside of that same config file so we can check that we can always do nano forward slash etsy forward slash rc dot config the, cool, the really cool thing I like about working with nano is that as long as you know the path where the file you're working with exists you can call that path at any point in time in the command line you don't have to be at a special place so I'm gonna hit control um, control X to exit out of nano so MySQL is installed Apache's installed we need to also install PHP so I'm gonna say PKG install and this is gonna be I'm gonna do PHP 5.6 I'm gonna do version 5.6 and we'll do that and you'll see there it goes new packages to be installed PHP 5.6 and we'll say yes and let it install all those things so there it goes blah blah blah, blah. 
going through all the things it needs to do and it's all done so I'm gonna do another what I want I also want to make sure I install the mods so I'm gonna say mod underscore PHP 56 and you can see there are all the mods so I'm gonna say yes to all the mods when I do the mods and this is this is why we do the mods because when I do the mods you'll see right here this code it's telling me right here this right here make sure that index.php is part of your directory index um, section and you should also add the following to your Apache configuration file so all of this stuff needs to be added to my Apache configuration file and I'll show you where you add these things this is one of the reasons why I like Bitvice as my um, as my SSH so if I come in here and select this and let go it has copied that to the um, to the clipboard so it's already copied it's sitting in the copy um, buffer and when I want to paste it I can just right click and paste it somewhere so let's open up the Apache configuration file so that file is going to exist and say nano and I'm gonna say forward slash user forward slash local forward slash Etsy forward slash Apache 24 forward slash httpd dot conf I believe yes I was right so we can see that file exists only thing I did was I said nano forward slash user forward slash local forward slash Etsy forward slash Apache 24 and then forward slash the name of the file which is the httpd dot conf file so the first part of this if I look in this you can't scroll it with your scroll wheel you have to actually use your arrow keys and mouse down so the first part we're gonna look for in here is a part and I'll show you where it's at it's really really far down in this lawn it's 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 kinda hard to, it's kind of easy to miss if you don't know what you're looking for when you're in here um, and I think I might have actually no there it is right here so you'll see right here directory index this is actually commented out right now but right here it says if module dir module and I've got directory index and it says index.html so right here what I need to add in here is I need to add in index.php and that's all you gotta do and then keep going down I'm just gonna do page down and go all the way down to the very bottom of my document I'm at the very bottom of my document and I'm gonna right click and when I right click it's going to paste what I had copied from before in here so if you don't know these are the lines that you need basically it's gonna be open bracket or um, your open your open carrot and then file map